God Save the Queen is the national anthem of the United Kingdom as well as several other countries around the world. Well, you know why, because of... In this video, I want to find out how the Jacobites, these contenders for the British crown in the late 17th century and early 18th century, how they actually inspired the anthem that came to be known as the anthem of their arch enemies, the Hanoverians and those that followed them. The year is 1745, and the son of the exiled James II, known as Charles Edward Stuart, or more commonly as Bonnie Prince Charlie, has recently landed in the west of Scotland at a place called Moidert. With the promise of French troops and support, some of the Highland clans joined his number and started to march southwards towards England. They entered Edinburgh unopposed, but at a place called Prestonpans, just to the east, they would see their first battle. With the element of surprise on their side and the relative inexperience of the troops they were facing, the Jacobites won an early and a crucial victory at Preston Pans, meaning they could now move on into England, marching through the western part of the, of the country through Lancashire and stopping at a place called Derby. Now it's at this point that the Jacobite Rising seems to have been unstoppable, and they could very well have marched not the too far distance between Derby to London, where the King was, and reinstated the Stuart monarchy should they be victorious. The vast majority of Londoners, however, were not very pro-Jacobite at all, or were the majority of the people in England at the time. The Jacobites were strongly associated with Catholicism and a more absolute form of monarchy, and the vast majority of people, especially in England at the time, were not Catholic at all, even in Scotland, and so he had far more enemies than he had supporters. And it's in 1745, with the Jacobites at Derby, that this verse first comes up, and it was published in A Gentleman's Magazine. And as you can see, it's an early form of what is now the National Anthem of the United Kingdom essentially saying, God save the king, long live our noble king. And their king, they obviously mean the one in London, so the Hanoverian, so King George. And it's noted that this was sung in the two largest theatres in London at the time, so it became quite popular fairly quickly, as it was raising anti-Jacobite sentiment in London, as the people there were scared that the Jacobites were coming, and this was showing their resentment for the ideas and for the man, Bonnie Prince Charlie, that they stood for. Now the exact line, God save the king, actually comes from a Bible verse. And interestingly enough, it's been sung at every coronation since the coronation of King Edgar, who was an Anglo-Saxon king who was crowned in 973. Okay, so I'm quite impressed they actually got that date because I hadn't remembered it for this, but I thought it was 973. And the interesting thing about King Edgar is that he actually came to the throne in 959, but he waited for an awfully long time to have his coronation, which is, anyway, that's Anglo-Saxon history, but it's very interesting. But anyway, it's been sung since his coronation in 973, and it's been sung ever since this, this verse, God Save the King. Now, it was also used from 1545, so the very back end of Henry VIII's reign, in the Navy as a watchword, so if you're trying to identify whether these marines or this ship is actually part of the the, uh, the fleet and not just trying to sneak in like an enemy, then you'd expect them to say a watchword, and often that watchword or watchphrase was God save the king. There's also the other verse about scattering his enemies, which is thought to have come from sermons that were read out on the anniversary of the gunpowder plot which was a plot during the 17th century by dissident Catholics to blow up the Houses of Parliament and the King uh, with Guy Fawkes, which is why in uh, many parts of the United Kingdom we burn effigies of Guy Fawkes and have a bonfire on the 5th of November. So then when this was written, God Save the King was a song in support of the soldiers of King George, of the Hanoverians and the British government against the Jacobites who were coming towards London at this time. Another of the verses that was written at this time even mentions some of the figures. So Marshal Wade was actually one of the government's uh, chief men in the army. He was raising an army at Newcastle, so not too far from me. Um, to, to fight the Jacobites before they actually came down, but obviously the Jacobites went through Western England, so the Jacobite army bypassed the army that was being raised by Wade, uh, and then went on to Derby, but you can see again, rebellious Scots to crush, God save the king, uh, and sedition hush, it's all about the rebellion and how they are supporting the king over the rebels. But wait, that's not the only version of events. Yeah. It's rewind time. Others have posited that this isn't actually a pro-Hanoverian anti-Jacobite song, but rather a pro-Jacobite anti-Hanoverian song. And these are some of the reasons that they give. Now, if we take a look at the lyrics of God Save the King, this one line is quite interesting. Send him victorious. 
Now, send him victorious might actually be alluding to the fact that they're on about Bonnie Prince Charlie, who at that time was over in France. Now, send him victorious might suggest that they're wanting them to send him to Scotland to start the rebellion, as they did in 1745. Although others have argued that this in the parlance of the time was to make him victorious. They're asking God to make King George victorious rather than physically sending him. But there is quite a lot of Jacobite imagery of the time about him being over the water. So he's often called the King over the water. Um, and often they are passing the, the wine glass over the water in as a toast to him because he was across the water and things like that. So that might be a little hint there. Another is that obviously you have before this time during King James II's time you had wine glasses engraved with the phrase God save the king and these were obviously the king at that time was King James so these would be Jacobite glasses. You also have the fact that this Latin verse is actually fairly similar to a lot of the lyrics in the God Save the King, and this was written during King James II's time. So this again alludes to that perhaps there's more to this story than it just being a pro-Hanoverian song against the Jacobites. So what I think is likely is that certain individuals who support the Hanoverians would sing the, their version of the song in support of King George, while those in support of the Jacobites might be singing and inscribing and saying, reciting, um, however it was done, their version of the song. And we actually have an existing copy of a Jacobite version of God Save the King, uh, which is this one, which obviously alludes a lot to Bonnie Prince Charlie and to Scotland, also Presbyterianism, because many of the, in fact, most of the supporters of the Jacobites in Scotland were actually Episcopalian Protestants rather than Catholics. Uh, and also it kind of disses George and his fecky. Um, because, you know, screw the Hanoverians, right? Uh, so, thank you very much for watching. This has been a bit of a random video about the National Anthem and about how the Jacobites inspired it. Now, I've got a few more videos kind of about the Jacobites and similar themes, uh, which people seem to have enjoyed. So, I thought I'd, uh, yeah, do that. And now, uh, what do you guys think of my little Bunny Prince Charlie bot? I spent way too long working on him and I thought, well, I have to make a video on him now. So, um, yeah, let me know in the comments below. So thanks very much for watching. This has been my video on the National Anthem and how the Jacobites probably inspired it or possibly even wrote it. So thank you and I will see you all very soon.